guys. Hello. We're back again today, ready to start another exciting day of our events. And I have with us today Tim Madden, a dearest friend for many years. Uh, I have known Tim since I've come to Ireland in 2005. And uh, he's been involved in Polish community, working with the Polish community since 2004. So we have met essentially through the Irish Polish uh, Culture and Business Association. And uh, currently, Tim is working on a very exciting new program that is a national program of well-being uh, that is happening, uh, will be happening in the Boron. And uh, as far as I know, it's going to be launched in January 2021. Is that correct, Tim? That's correct. Hi, Justina. Welcome. Uh, uh, Falter wrote, Vitame, uh, good to see everybody. <laughs> In Dobre, uh, good to see everybody today. Yes, the um, the Going Well program, it'll be called. It's a program that the uh, is already in existence with the GAA, which is our National Gaelic Association, based in Croke Park in Dublin. And I saw the program about a year ago. It's running very successfully in schools. And the plan is to um, bring it to Limerick and Clare. Uh, from 2021 for schools and then we're going to also have a version of the program make it available to communities and we will also have a business type program so it's a very exciting very exciting project justina excellent so. it, it, it sounds very well it sounds really yeah. interesting and um i think um well-being is so important nowadays in the times of COVID that this will be essentially a lifesaver for many i suppose Hopefully, um, it's a very, it's a very, very good program. It's a challenging program, so it's not, uh, it's not like come to one class and do a keep fit exercise and, uh, you know, you you you've completed the program. It's quite a, it's quite a holistic program. Getting the person to to kind of look at themselves and look at their, look at their behaviours and lifestyle and hopefully go on a pathway to uh, addressing and improving all of that. So. Absolutely, yeah. that's. That's great. That's great, Tim. Yeah. Really looking forward to it. Yeah. Looking forward to it. I'm looking keep forward to it. Keeping fingers yeah. crossed. Keeping yeah. fingers crossed yeah. for it going yeah. well. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Now, Tim, you are with us today because um, you're going to tell us about Poland in the eyes of an Irishman. Okay. Where do, I, where do I start? Um, um, I think I might start, Justina, if I could, with a little bit of music. Um, I'd, like, I'd like to start with uh, a bit of Christy Moore. Okay. If we, if we could bring Christy in, and I think uh, it's about two, two and a half minutes, but I think the uh, it's a good bit of music to start our session. Excellent. Here we go. And the first time, and the first time ever I saw. The sun rose in your eyes And the moon and stars Were the gifts you gave To the dark and the endless sky And the first time ever I kissed your lips I felt the earth move in my hand Like the trembling heart of a captive bird Your heart. 
heart beat close to mine And I knew our love would fill the earth And would last till the end of time Right, I'd said we'd kickstart with uh, an emotional song. Hopefully it wasn't too emotional in times mm. of COVID, but it, uh, it resonated with me uh, in the words, some of the words in it, and it just summarizes how I feel about Poland and how I feel about Polish people. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you so yeah. much. So it's, uh, yeah, so the journey started the journey for me started in 2004 in Limerick in, in Jane Gleason's shop in Catherine Street. And uh, I went into the shop and Shane said, I understand you play a bit of soccer. And I said, yeah, it's, I'd love to play a game, five-a-side soccer in Skull Carmel, which is a, a near the center of Limerick school, a girls' school. And um, we were playing five-a-side and three of the guys playing on the team were Polish. They had arrived uh, from Poland. Uh, Radek, you'll probably know, who opened the Polish bar. Yeah. He's now, now living in Singapore. And Bartek Borenski, who's still here with us, and another guy, Jarek. And uh, after the game, I said, guys, would you like to go for a drink? So I took them to Fennessy's Pub, the great Fennessy's Pub when it's open, in, uh, in, in New Street in Limerick. And we had a few drinks. And I said to them, where are you going? Very deep question to be asking people after a few drinks, and they said they would like to go to the Sin Bin, which was a nightclub in Limerick at the time. And I said, No, no, sorry, my question is, uh, are you staying in Ireland? Are you returning to Poland? What are you thinking of doing? And two of the guys said they'd like to start a business. Mm. So I said to them, um, Tell you what I will do. I will uh, host a night in Hanratty's Hotel in four weeks' time on a Saturday night uh, and bring your friends who want to start a business. I was expecting maybe five people to turn up at, mm -hmm. at the meeting. I walked into the room and uh, there was 25 Polish people inside in the room. So that was the start. That was where it started. Excellent. And uh, we had a, a really wonderful evening. and. Um, that was January of you know uh, 2005, and uh, before we knew it, we were then you know on a roll, and we said, look, let's uh, let's plan for St Patrick's Day parade. Let's form the Irish Polish Cultural and Business Association. The reason I wanted it as a cultural association rather than just a business association is I wanted to integrate uh, people uh, through culture, through all forms of culture, including art, music, uh, performance, uh, sport. Absolutely. And then uh, I have joined the association in 2005 and there were a lot of fantastic things we were doing, like one of them on the picture. Tell us what is this? Yeah, so that is the, um, um, <laughs> that the, the theme of the theme of the, um, the St. Patrick's Day was our first St. Patrick's Day festival. And uh, it was, uh, we were also going to introduce Chopin and we were going to introduce Polish coal and uh, they needed somebody to um, mind the horse and mind the droppings of the horse. So <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, I, I as, I as what chairman- What an honorable job to do. <laughs> I, I as chairman got, uh, volunteered and that's me in the center of the picture there with uh, Pat O'Sullivan has got his back to me. 
who's the honorary consul. And uh, uh, Justina, you will know the girls better than I do. I know Magda. I, I, I recognize Magda, Yanoviak Magda. Uh, I'm saying hello to. Yeah. Um, uh, Chapla, she's in Chapla in uh, near Gdańsk. Uh, they came back to Poland uh, yeah. quite a long time ago. So uh, very emotional when I saw that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, that's kind of slide one. If you want to just click on the next yeah. slide, uh, we've just got a uh, similar group and um, uh, the guide to yeah. Just go back one. Just go back one slide if we could. So we've got uh, Bartek is here in the front with me, and Bartek is the guy who subsequently helped me form the Polish Limerick Soccer Club, which I will come to a bit later in 2007. Mm. So we move on. We'll move on to our next slide. And uh, Jerzy is there on the left. And Jerzy yes, is still sir. here. I met him Hi, last Jerzy. week. Yeah, he's here. In, and I'm not it's sure the other, the other chap's name. But it just gave, it gives you a, an example of the energy from, the, from St. Patrick's Day. And it gives you the, uh, the, the fun. We the had fun. on St. Patrick's Day, and actually, the, I would, I would, let him say a few words. What St. Patrick's Day means to an Irishman, because some Polish people will be probably listening to us, and maybe not all of them are so familiar. Well, they're the ones that live in Ireland, they do, but the likes of guys that are back in Poland, they do not probably understand how important St. Patrick's Day is to Irish people. Just say a few words. Yeah, sure. So it's our, it's obviously our national day, and. Uh, um, it is a, a day of celebration. It's our national saint, St. Patrick, and he's the founder of the, um, I suppose, the, the uh, Christian uh, belief and Catholicism, etc., which came later, but he's our national saint. So we celebrate his day on that day. Um, traditionally, it's a day of uh, f family and friends and, and celebration and music. Irish music, which you heard a little bit earlier, Irish dancing, so yeah. first long tradition of dancing, um, and performance, and uh, you know it, it just goes on. So the next slide is is the following year. It's two thousand and six, and we welcomed the uh, the Polish accordion band. I don't know if you remember what town they were from, Ruda Slavska. No. No? Ruda Śląska. I think they were from Ruda Śląska. We have a friend from Ruda Śląska who's doing Polska Era Festival, Wojciech Kostka. Uh, okay. So he would be quite interested to know that uh, we we had um, we had a Ruda Śląska band uh, here. Uh, we'll link up with that later on. Yeah. So that's one of those. Yeah. So, so that's, that's, um, that's fourteen years ago. So yeah. And the next photograph is is very. Uh, emotional for me because the, the, the gentleman in the center of the photograph is my late father who unfortunately I, we lost uh, six years ago Tim as well he's also he's Tim senior and I'm Tim junior <laughs> and um, that was a fabulous after event we had after the parade in number two Perry Square upstairs and the yeah. band the accordion band joined us and the Limerick gospel singers joined us and the singing and the dancing that afternoon was to behold. I just wish I had it a video. It was just yeah. magic. Magic, absolutely. Magic. This is a this is a, a bit of a surreal photograph. This is these are the boys in the band at the window upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought the photo was kind of fun. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I just love the art of it, and I love the reflection, yeah. and I just love them it's kind of pointing. Like ashes time, isn't it? It's which. It looks like Angela's ashes time. It does, yeah. It's March, and um, you know, but the guys are the boys are obviously having fun, and you know, their performance is over, and uh, they're just being boys. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> That's what we love about children, being children. Uh, here we are, Justina, and you're there. Hello, um, that's me there, there, there on the left. left. I'm not sure Yay. the other girl's names. Like you probably remember. Not the sure name. myself at this yeah. stage. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, so that's another one. And here we are with... Um, oh, we have that uh, ambassador, uh, Tadeusz yeah, Zumowski. Zumowski. Tadeusz. Tadeusz with his lovely wife. And I think that was the launch of the Chopin yeah. um, 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 sculpture, wasn't it, in Mary I? That came a bit later, but that a photograph is actually taken in the uh, army barracks the army barracks in Edward Street in Limerick on the morning mm -hmm. of. So each St. Patrick's Day, the army 
the army have a special ceremony. They have a church ceremony early in the morning, and uh, this is the afters of that in the barracks, in in the in the officers' mess, where they had obviously lots of hospitality and Irish. That's an Irish coffee. I'm holding there, which is a very nice on a cold morning in March. Before, <laughs> before the parade. A lot of Irish stuff is lovely on a cold morning. <laughs> yeah. and, and now. Uh, so on we go to uh, back into 2007. And the theme that's coming through here is the, uh, the, the football, which I will refer to time and time again. This is the kind of start of the, the formation of uh, Polonia Limney football club um i have in front of me here and it'll probably see it later enough you can see uh the um in the it'll come i'll come i'll come to the next slide but that's bartek they're holding the football yeah. and some of the family and friends uh just in the start of the parade so that's you know the lead into it this oh, is christmas 2007 christmas, christmas party and, uh, and there's Magda, there's myself, and there's Beata Małkowska, Obara. So, um, witajcie dziewczyny, pamiętamy stare czasy, kiedy żeśmy się świetnie bawiły na Christmas party. And when Christmas parties were allowed, so unfortunately, none of that this year. Yeah, yeah, that was a, uh, because we were at that stage, we were probably two or three years into the association. Yeah. And we were, we were, um, I think at that point, we were, just getting better and better we were then at this point um getting funding we were getting sponsorship i remember bank of ireland just to mention one gave us quite substantial sponsorship because they were keen to uh targets and and uh you know because the the polish the poland polish market at the time around 2007 was very very significant i think the numbers within the island of ireland were about 750,000 Polish people. I don't I think, think it has changed much. I don't think it has dropped. I think we're still the biggest minority. Well, we definitely are the, still the biggest yeah, minority. Correct. And, and I think in the Limerick, yeah, in the Limerick area, Justina, we estimate around 10,000. Yeah. So yeah, just you know, Limerick, that's yeah, the just broader Limerick uh, Midwest figure. So that, yeah, that was a great nice, that was a great party. So. Yeah, and here's the uh, St. Patrick's Day 2008. I think you're there to the right of the picture with a holding a sundial. I don't know if you can see it. So if you look at the picture, there's a boy holding a banner, and I think okay. that that okay. could be okay. dressed up behind. But I mean, might be not sure. <coughs> but I think we have joined up then with Polish school, didn't we? We did. Uh, our children yeah. from Saturday Polish school, well, not Saturday, but essentially Polska Szkoła w Limerick, the uh, government funded one, because for people that are interested, we have, uh, we are very lucky as a nation to have our schools, uh, which are weekend schools, essentially for children to go to and learn Polish language, uh, essentially Polish language and, and uh, history and culture. They are funded by the Polish government. So the Polish government is paying for uh, for the teachers uh, and for the rental uh, for Polish children to keep the language, um, which is essential because I'm a mother of three and I know that they can be fluent in speech, but reading and writing is huge challenge, huge, huge challenge because Polish is very difficult uh, language to learn. And the Polish, uh, the Polish school, which is based at uh, St. Clement's, Mm. And Emmons College, which in turn is based uh, as part of the Redemptorist uh, religious order in Limerick, uh, they have they were very very supportive. The Redemptorists were very very supportive very of supportive. the football team. They gave us their their football grounds. You know when we were yes. starting. Um, First thing, yeah, we were I running very, there. I have a very funny memory. I just would like to share because it's come into my head. We when we were starting the, the football team, we. Um, we had the team and we had the, you know, the, the sponsor and we had the kit and we were ready to start in the league. And because we also had a lot of connections with the African community in Limerick at the time, the Africans said they would like to play us in a friendly game. So I decided I would be the referee. So I was to be the referee of this game in the Redemptorist College, the Father's Field in Limerick, what they call it. 
So I said to the Africans, do you have kit? Do you have, you know, tops, like football tops? And they said, no, we don't. So I decided because I had in my house about 30 football tops, they were all white because I support Leeds United, which is their color. So it's a white top. Uh, I brought all my all my tops to the to the game. I gave them to the Africans at the end of the game. I said, you keep the tops, you keep them. And I today meet some of the African people in Limerick walking around with my football top and my name on the back. <laughs> of the I know. I got my name like Tim on the back of the football top. <laughs> you know, like 2008. So it's a great memory. It's a really great, great memory. Uh, and we have a lot of connections with with other ethnic groups because as you know we're, we're very involved in trying to integrate all of the communities together um of which there are so many different nationalities here Absolutely. in the and beyond so here we are again i think that could be your magic and yourself there you'll see there is, yes and there's <laughs> other guys and that one is i remember this one yes and that's yeah. uh, one of the um St. Patrick's Days and other ones. So we had great fun, always great fun. Yeah, so great. That was another great day. We will move on yeah. to maybe the next slide. Yeah, we'll and, move on. Uh, we move on because there's plenty. Yeah. I just keep an eye on my clock. It's uh, not too bad. This is the Janesboro Football Club, which I'm a member of in Limerick. And we uh, were invited to bring our over 40s football team to Zavierce, uh, which is about an hour and a half from Krakow. Uh, because the two of the boys in Polonia Limney, which are who are in the photograph at the back, Christoph and Andre, that's their hometown. So they mm. invited us to come over, and they came with us from Limerick to Shannon to Krakow to to uh, the stadium, and um, we were expecting to meet maybe another team and maybe have meet meet five people, ten people watching the game. So, as it turned out, when we got to this stadium, there was about 1,500 people at the game. Wow. We had local television <laughs> waiting. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just fantastic four days. We had great games. We had great hospitality from the team. Um, the mayor of the city uh, met us gave us exchange gifts and it was just a really memorable uh four days in in the crack of in the crack of regions so i just wanted to share that one there Excellent. yeah so great day. beautiful and so you experience polish hospitality in person yeah several times it's i I've, I've i've only been to poland four times here is our polonia limni team and uh you know yeah. i'm down there at the front and the right and uh there's a gentleman behind me who is wearing a hat. I don't know if you can see him. And he is my late uncle, Joe, who I lost, unfortunately, last year. And Joe mm. was a really a great friend and mentor and supporter. So that's that's the that's the Polish lads, you know, on the team. That's the team. And we played, we played in a very competitive uh, Limerick District Football League uh, for five years, from 2007 to 2012. And... Um, uh, a lot of those, a good few of those guys are still here. A good few of those lads are still working and, you know, and some have returned to Poland and gone elsewhere. So um, great days with Polonia. So Absolutely. Yeah. Now we go through another Patrick's days. We fly through them. Maybe them now, there's yeah. another. Goes quickly. And I love this yeah. girl at the front. I don't know who, who she is now or where she is 11 years later. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure she's uh, the next photograph probably gives you a better photograph. A clip of her yeah i just i think she represents uh with her beautiful dress and her um her traditional costume polish costume yes. Christina, you may be able to fill me in more i don't know is it a regional yes, or yes, well um it, 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 the, the costumes are very um in a way characteristics of the regions in poland different regions and there is the whole culture of the costumes in poland traditional um um folk costumes because they're essentially folk but uh, they share like common features uh, like you have um 
you have the flowers, you have, um, um, you know, all the jewelry that is matching colors and you have the skirts and certain uh, embroideries. And these are masterpieces in itself. Obviously, th that would be for a, for a child. Of, um, um, so, um, but those can be very costly when you look at them because these are all, they're, they're all handmade, essentially, you know. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll move, we move on. on. Yeah, we'll move on. This is a 2010, and it was uh, Frédéric Chopin's 200th uh, anniversary. We had a wonderful, yeah. uh, we had a wonderful celebration of everything to do with, with Chopin, and we had an artistic. Uh, I don't know if you remember in the Strand Hotel in Limerick, we had a very good uh, art painting and art competition. And we well, that was, that was, I think, third or fourth Polish, third or third or something Polish, second. That was, sorry, that was second Polish Arts Festival because, or third one, because we have started in 2007. Myself, Correct. Magda um, uh, Wrońska Sudo, and Natalia Czarnecka, we have started the festival in 2007 and uh, we started very humbly. And then in 2010, we had it in, in Strand Hotel when there was a, um, uh, when there was an auction. We had auction. Yes. And the yes. piece to it was going to um, local charity. So that, yeah. that, that essentially what it yeah. was. I'm just thinking with that photograph, Justina, would it be appropriate to play a little piece of Chopin just to share yeah. with our Irish audience and our, um, our, uh, Polish audience. Yeah, perfect. I'll just uh, I'll just add on the new one here.
Now, <clears throat> that well, was emotional. Yes, yes. And, that was uh, emotional. Beautiful. Chopin, yes, so beautiful. And uh, so many other uh, Polish musicians, composers. Absolutely. Not, not what I might known, think not known to uh, maybe Irish audiences, Justina, apart from Chopin. Absolutely. A lot of people don't know that Chopin was Polish, the same as Maria Skłodowska Curie, um, 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 uh, the physicist and chemist. Um, you know, not many people know that she she was again Polish. So, which was uh, she was naturalized French, and Chopin also. Um, we have interesting comment on live stream, and I'd like to read that. It comes from Anka Minescu. Hello, Anka. Yeah. Uh, thank you for joining us and being with us. And <clears throat> Anka writes, I like the combination of culture and business because the two are so strongly interconnected and accounting for culture and also for cultural artistic expressions lays wonderful and more sustainable grounds for business relationships. Recognizing and respecting cultures also signals partnership rather than any, any other power relationships that migrants encounter in a host country. Well, damn tin for having the vision from the beginning. The traditional wear and symbols and partners and colors in Poland are absolutely fascinating. So very beautiful. And the color red always stands out uh, to me. Every time I visited Poland, that is what I remember the most. The sense of fashion nowadays is so hip and attractive. Very, so very, that's very from Anka. That's great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anka. For that we'll comment. On. And we'll on. carry yeah. on with the presentation. Yes. Yeah. So this was a business seminar. Um, again, just promoting the association and uh, that we were about integrating Irish and Polish communities globally through cultural and business activities. So it took, it took us into lots of places and spaces. Um, for me personally, it also took me, I was invited to join the Ireland-Poland Business Association, which I did, and that was in Dublin. So, but that was a business uh, group. So there was a different uh, dynamic, you know, there, but it was about, it was about what setting up businesses, people, Irish people going to Poland to set up businesses or big companies setting up in Poland at the time yeah. because, uh, and vice versa uh, through the, um, you know, the ambassadors um, or the consuls uh, working with them to encourage um, our Polish people here to set up, set up to trade, to exchange, etc. So, yeah. And this is the year also when the Polish Arts Festival we we have separated so um, from from uh, Irish uh, Polish Culture and Business Association essentially the Polish Arts Festival started working just on the cultural aspects so we have taken that bit and uh, I have become um, 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 a, a director of the festival and with the girls we were just pushing it. Um, as if separately. Uh, however, always getting a huge support uh, from the business sector because um, those of two, they're, they're, they're lo they lovely come together and I think they're very important to support arts. Um, and okay, we need that again, support. Too. Again, we recognize, uh, to say it, Holmes O'Malley Sexton this year as the main sponsor for Polish Art Festival 2020. And all of those other sponsors, Justina, for the last uh, 13 years, to acknowledge all of them and their contributions to keeping the show on the road and hopefully to other days ahead, you know, as we as we go forward. I know we have plans uh, to increase the festival and increase activities uh, either next year or certainly 2022 for the 15th. Arts Festival, we might we might talk about that. That's what we're planning definitely. We 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 have we were getting ready next year and plan it all next year. We know with COVID, it's all um, difficult to plan properly. But um, with the view to uh, the fifteenth edition of the Polish Arts that we have it all mm -hmm. set up on 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 a, on, a, on a completely different level, and that's very good. To mention that we thank to our sponsors that been with us throughout the year, and as you said, Homes Assist. Um, essentially this year and a Polish of Wisła and our financial services, services and the Polish embassy has been with us from uh, nearly a start and um, Limerick City and County Council as well as Creative Island. So th these are all those um, institutions that help us 
um, do what, I, what what we do. And I'm actually very proud that we're online this year. And I think that that we can raise more awareness of us doing things. So it's all good. Yeah. So on we go to uh, on we go to the Euros 2012, and it's the whole football team. Um, and I suppose the next slide uh, gives a if you can just move it forward there, Justina. The next slide is here with mm -hmm. my great friend uh, Morris O'Sullivan, and Morris and I went to uh, to the Euros for two weeks, and we stayed in Gdansk, and we went uh, to uh, the games, the all the, uh, the three Ireland games against uh, Spain, who were the European and world champions. So to see Spain play was just a wonderful experience, uh, followed by Italy, because Italy played Spain in the Euro 2012 final to see the Italians in our group. And last but not least, on the first uh, meeting in Poznan was to meet with Croatia. Um, and uh, it was just a wonderful party for two weeks. It was just, the Polish people loved it. Everybody, you know, it was just like, it was even dancing in the streets with the riot. Yeah. <laughs> and I tell you, Ireland was recognized at that time of Euro, um, I remember uh, 2012, Ireland was recognized as the best fans ever. Um, that, uh, you know, Poland ever had. So essentially they were saying that if you ever going to uh, to the football match, you should see what Irish are doing because Irish are having pure fun. There's no fighting. There's no, uh, you know, the different kind of, um, um, I, I don't know what's the word, but you, you're not, yeah. Yeah, that's the one. But just pure joy, whether somebody wins or loses, it's all about joy and happiness and being together. It doesn't matter. So yeah. I think Ireland presented themselves in the most beautiful um, way. Because, um, for example, like when I look at the Tommen Park and all the games, people are going with children. People are enjoying themselves. It's a night. It's, it's, it's a time out for the family, whether in Poland. If you want to go to the match, you better think twice. You know, it's changing. I believe it's changing. I had a very, uh, several yeah. great experiences. Yeah, really, some great experiences. But one of the experiences was in the fan zone in Gdansk, and it was Poland were playing Russia, and the game was on in Warsaw, and there was a hundred thousand Polish people inside in the state in the in the fan zone. And I was there with my uh, my colours, which I have here, if I can get them. Um, all right, just pull it back. So I brought the Irish Polish scarf and I brought the Irish colours. And I the whole experience was I've never been hugged or kissed by so many people in all my life. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me. There was several thousand people maybe hugged and kissed me within the space of two hours or something. It felt it was just and they all said, you know, I, I've been to Ireland or I haven't been to Ireland, but my family, my children are in Ireland. And it was just it was just such an emotional uh, you know, experience, a really, really positive experience. Um and wonderful hospitality um from from everywhere everywhere we went in poland you know by train to poznan from gdansk or in gdansk itself um and uh it was a fantastic fantastic uh, one of one of my top two or three life experiences definitely fantastic i'm, I'm really glad to hear that yeah. i'm really glad to hear that yeah yeah this was the launch i was the uh this was the launch of a an Ireland Poland Chamber of Commerce in 2012, and I was the um, the first chief executive of that grouping. So it was an all Ireland, island of Ireland chamber. So I was I was mm. I was delighted to be part of that and that process in 2012. Um, so yeah, so then I move forward to 2014. This was a, a trip uh, with my our good friends. Uh, Podrick and Brenda, I know Podrick is online, and uh, my wife Patty and I took a Christmas break, and we went to Krakow. And uh, Krakow, for those who haven't been, is just such a magnificent uh, city. 
it's got it is so much it's very yeah yeah and it's been the first capital of Poland. So capital of Poland was first essentially Krakow and then it moved to Warsaw. And what is very interesting, what is happening between Krakow and Warsaw, like people from Krakow, they 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 kind of compete with people from Warsaw saying that we are from the capital. No, we are from the capital. We were first, but we are now, you know? Okay. <laughs> so yeah. uh, those cities are amazing. And Krakow was, um, has this beautiful old town, which wasn't destroyed during the Second World War, because we know Warsaw was literally wiped out. So look, Warsaw was just like 90% of Warsaw was gone, uh, bombarded by Russians. And yes. when uh, Germany was moving away. Yeah, Justina, sorry, what is, what is really beautiful about um, Poland, which we don't quite experience here is just the architecture and mm. the sculpturing sculpted and the churches and the you know the fabulous uh, castle the vavel yes vavel pronouncing it properly the vavel yeah and um so i would really recommend i'm sure lots of people maybe here have already been to krakow but for those who haven't um recommend really recommend if, if you are to pick one town in Poland, one place to go to, please go start with Krakow and then move to Wrocław because this is essentially where, where my heart lies is Wrocław and Brzegdolny. So hello to Brzegdolny, uh, to all my friends and family from Brzegdolny and, and to Wrocław and other family and friends uh, from there. Um, so I suppose uh, if you are to choose and there's direct flights from Shannon to Wrocław, you know, so it's it's, right. it's a great. It's a, from Dublin, obviously. It's you can fly anywhere. Uh, I don't know about that, but we will be uh, we will be um, definitely resuming those flights when uh, when things become just more sane okay. in the world. Well, Dana, there's a few more slides, not too many. So that's like the the Christmas market type um, in Krakow, and you know all of it it offers. But any any time of the year, it's uh, it's a great experience. It really is absolutely. Experience. Yeah. So here you are. Um, <laughs> funny kind of an image. Uh, I was going to say. Um, the Holy Mother of God. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Uh, you know the Madonna. Uh, the Madonna. I, I would just like to say and reflect online that uh, without you, there wouldn't be the Polish Art Festival, and it certainly would not have uh, sustained itself from uh, for the last thirteen. 13 years and uh, I, I really enjoy working with you uh, on, on the project you know it's it's uh, it's 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 really great what I would like to share at this stage if I could online I was going to do this later I would just like to sing for the day that's in it because uh, at four o'clock today Limerick are on the way they're actually there now they're in Dublin and they're about to play against Galway our neighbours uh, in the All Ireland hurling semi final at four o'clock today, and uh, the winner of that game will play in the final in two weeks' time back in Crow Park in our national sport of hurling, our warrior sport, if I can use that term, against Yay. Waterford, uh, who were in the um, who won surprisingly won the other semi final last night against Kilkenny. So we wish uh, Waterford well in the final. And uh, we also wish Galway well, but really it's for Limerick. But what I'd like to sing. Limerick, go for yeah, it, Limerick. Yeah, well, I'm just going to sing reflecting where we are and Limerick and this photograph. Uh, Justina, for you, I won't sing too much of it, but I will sing. Um, <clears throat> Limerick, you're a lady. You're Shannon Waters, tears of joy that flow. The beauty that surrounds you i'll take it with me love wherever i go while waking in the arms of distant waters a new day finds me far away from home and limerick you're my lady the one true love that i have ever known Oh, bravo, Tim. Well, uh, I could have brought my children. They would do a lovely choir with you because they're also, oh, Limerick, you, my yeah. lady. Maybe next time 
Um, before we conclude, we're probably a little bit ahead of time. I'm just watching the, the clock. I would like to uh, reflect on the festival, which is themed as uh, Together as One. And I think we lost him for a second. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it's it's amazing to look back at all those years where we've been and uh, where we are at the moment. And if I may say that um, 13 years of the Polish Arts Festival is amazing. And, Basically, be with us. I think Tim is back. I'm back. I'm back yeah. Uh, Hello. Uh, yes. Could I could I finish uh, just briefly, Justina, with a? Please. It's a poem that you will know quite well from your friends and mine, uh, John O'Donoghue. Oh, I love John O'Donoghue. And it's uh, called uh, "For a New Beginning." Oh, beautiful one. Oh, gosh. Go ahead. I think you will know about uh, its call. It's, I will start. And it says, in, in out of the way places of the heart where your thoughts never think to wonder, this beginning has been quietly forming, waiting until you were ready to emerge. For a long time, it has watched your desire feeling the emptiness growing inside you, noticing how you willed yourself on, still unable to leave what you had outgrown. It watched you play with the seduction of safety and the gray promises that sameness whispered, heard the waves of turmoil rise and relent, wondered, would you always live like this? Then, the delight when your courage kindled and out you stepped onto new ground your eyes young again with energy and dream a path of plenitude opening before you though your destination is not yet clear you can trust the promise of this opening Unfurl yourself into the grace of beginning that is at one with your life's desire. Awaken your spirit to adventure. Hold nothing back. Learn to find ease in risk. Soon you will be home in a new rhythm for your soul senses the world that awaits you. I think it's appropriate for the times we are in and uh, COVID. And I, I hope that uh, the session today is uh, a part of the antidote towards COVID-19 for those who are with us uh, online or offline as the case may be. So uh, I'm We're feeling honored. To everybody, because we love hugging. So Timmy, I think at the end, we just have to give everybody a hug together as one you know guys yeah so together as one virtual so, hug to all of you yeah. we have to be going and closing i'm afraid because yeah. another one is coming at 1 p.m yeah um at 1 p.m yeah, we would, have... you like to, would you like to uh share uh, is the um is your clip available to show at this stage or do you want to show it the freedom clip because i think again it's appropriate is that... yeah I wouldn't, um, I, I, what I would say is um, the clip is on our uh, YouTube channel and it's also on the Polish Arts Festival website. So you're very welcome to uh, have a look at it and yeah. uh, and reflect on it. And I would yeah. love to hear from you 
what are your thoughts? How do you see freedom for yourself? Because essentially this is an artistic, it's my artistic statement on freedom and uh, whatever was going on in me when uh, at the first lockdown. So the clip was done in July and then we worked on that uh, later on. So feel free to uh, watch it on YouTube and under Polish Arts Festival on our channel. And uh, it's also on the website. So if you go to our website, it pops up straight away. You don't have to search for it and browse for it um, um, on the YouTube. Tim, it was lovely having you. I must say uh, thank you so much for being a true friend, a great um, a director for development. We have a lot of plans for the years to come. And all those years, you've been always very supportive. Thanks, Justine. And Jinkuya um, Bardzo. And Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, I look forward to talking again a bit later. Yes, yes, we come back at 3 p.m. So anybody yeah. who wants to bit of a get bit of an Irish, you know, and as you see, Tim is highly entertaining. So I don't think it'll be it'll be um it'll be a waste of time or okay. an afternoon. Okay, thank you thank so you. much. Okay. I see you soon at 1 p.m. with Irene Ursai and uh Island in the Eyes of a Polish Adventurer. And this one is in Polish. Okay. Thank you. Ciao, guys.